Good morning, everybody. Hi. Here we are. It's hump day. It's Wednesday. Oh, my goodness. So, let's get things going here. It's always so much fun to get things going. I seem to be closer today. <laughs> as long as you can see the, the, uh, see the stuff happening here. Oh, there I am. There I am. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, good morning. We are... Oh, that's funny. I always have such an interesting time setting this stuff up. But anyways. Okay. So, um, so we're going to start with a... Uh, start with the onions. We're going to make a lentil soup. And um, I feel very... Good morning, Monique. Hi. I feel very short today. I don't know why. I feel like the camera is making me look really short. But <laughs> anyways, okay, so we're good. So this looks like, um, oh gosh, okay. Sometimes it takes a minute to get these things rolling. And um, okay, Darlene, hi. Okay, we're on, we're on for sure, for sure. Okay, so we're going to do the onion thing here. I have brand new onions. <laughs> you guys always laugh at me because um, I don't go out shopping very much. And I think I had like a 20-pound bag of onions. And um, they lasted a really long time. And then we used the, uh, the onions. And, uh, and we made a onion balsamic and then dehydrate them like we we fried them down into um kind of like how you would for fried sweet onions and then made a balsamic and then um dehydrated them really 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 tasty yes i am doing much better today i was probably pretty funny yesterday after my big tooth surgery um yeah it was kind of <laughs> it was kind of a kind of a big deal you know and so anyways i've still got the stitches i'm feeling better um, I have to tell you though, um, I, it started swelling last night on my, like my, my cheek was starting to come out to here and I was like, oh my God, you know, after all that, it's supposed to be getting better, not worse. So I did take the, um, more of the homeopathic remedies, the, um, uh, Arnica and, um, and I did some more silver. And um, it went right down right away. Like, so it was really, um, uh, really effective to do the silver. So I did the um, rinsing out, <laughs> tapping my thing here, rinsing out with the silver and also, of course, salt water too. So, um, yeah, so good. I'm glad I, <laughs> I'm glad I'm a little more back to normal this morning. Um, so still, you know, with the juicing, we did the, the great juicing. And so that's really helpful for the energy and for the healing, right? So you want to do things that are very healing and you want to, um, stay away from things that, that, um, hinder the healing process, which is like, you know, sugar and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so, so, um, that kind of thing is really really good can you guys see i feel like my camera is way too low i guess you can see i'm just cutting onions anyways okay so we're just gonna we're gonna do so because i have to have softer foods and everything we're gonna do a uh, lentil soup and then um i was i was gonna do something um with you guys with these um sweet potatoes actually they're yams i think I think the yams are the are the orangier orangier ones, <laughs> and I'm gonna do that and make them all mushy for tonight. But um, I didn't get around to doing that in front of you, so I might decide on Plan B, and we'll do something else interesting with that. Because what I actually did want to do with those was the um, uh, like a um, potato salad with it with yams, and that's really good too. So, um, so we'll see since I didn't get around to it. So I had lots to do, uh, this morning. I hope you guys are all good. There's a little bit of sunshine out there. So we're going to, we're putting on the, um, on the onions. And for those of you that have just joined that, uh, thank you, darling. I'm glad you can see everything. 
It's, it's so funny because I guess it looks totally different where I'm looking. Anyways, um, so for, for the newbies that came on, um, it's just a pan full with a, just a little bit of water in it. There's no oil or anything, and I'm just sauteing the onions to get them to where they're a little bit um, translucent or, or transparent, maybe, maybe even transparent. And then we're going to put the um, carrots in. And um, so, yeah, so we'll talk about some other things too. So I hope that you guys have been out doing a little bit of the um, wild crafting because uh, I've been doing lots of, um, lots of sharing information about the wild plants and the weeds and the, and the things that will be really helpful for us um, during the winter to keep our immune system healthy and, um, and to help with the, uh, you know, with whatever it is that we may not have access to. And it's, I don't know, I don't know, you guys, like the news is just like totally changing every single day. And, um, aren't these beautiful carrots? These are like brand new. They're brand new this spring. I'm so excited. They're spring carrots. I got got them from Nays Guards at the um, farm market, and uh, yeah, so that's super exciting to get um, this year's carrots. <laughs> and that's what I mean, you know. Like, I don't know, you know, I don't know you guys, but um, there is uh, there's talk of of. Um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with the borders and stuff like that and, and essential services and stuff like that. So, uh, so I've been encouraging all along this year for you to grow your own garden, to try and grow what you can, to uh, take advantage of the wild foods that we have. We're so blessed here in the, in the Northwest um, to be able to have so many uh, usable green foods as well as the weeds and the um, dandelions you know I know a few people have commented you know, that I'm getting too far out there talking about dandelions and and weeds and eating them and using them but they're so full of nutrition and so many um, vitamins and minerals that we don't access uh, or that we, you know, we can't access through the foods that we eat because basically we're eating, you know, stuff like what I'm making, right? And so we need to add to that because the carrots are grown in whatever soil they're grown in and the celery and the onions and um, potatoes and stuff. And we really live on like, I don't know, for most people, maybe a variety of 12 vegetables a day. And, and so you're only getting those same... Um, nutrients right over and over again and we need all kinds of things we need we need good bacteria we need bacteria from the soil <laughs> we need all the different um all the different micronutrients and micro uh, trace minerals and everything that that the weeds and the other plants can pull up that the reg regular vegetables don't um you know they don't either they don't have access to or um, they don't have access to, or, uh, or their GMO or whatever, you know, grown in a soil that's been used up over and over and over again. Um, these carrots I'm sure are great because they're from Nays Guards, but if you buy something out of the store that maybe comes from California, then we don't know if those soils are depleted. Um, this, this, I, I still... I'm still a little swollen, so I'm tripping over my tongue once in a while. <laughs> Slow down and talking. Okay, so a um, piece of ginger in there. I'll try and say that without tripping on my tongue. And we're going to add some peppers uh, too, so um, to this lentil soup. So as we um, as we go through with the different vitamins and minerals and the different vegetables and the peppers have a lot of vitamin C and um, so we're going to add some of this to it as well and a little bit of yellow peppers and then the tomatoes we were talking about the tomatoes especially when they're cooked 
um, we spoke about those. Oh, and you always, always wash all your vegetables before you put them in the fridge. I say that every day. You guys must be tired of it. But I, I, I wash the label. I wash the label of the tomato. Um, but yeah, for sure, especially during these times, you want to be washing everything. And uh, if you wash your vegetables before you, before you put them in the fridge, it makes the, the meal go much, much, much faster because you just grab and go. Grab and go of those vegetables. So, um, yeah, so with the tomatoes, too, so much research on them being anti-inflammatory. So, um, you know, to eat the anti-inflammatory foods are really important if you have any kind of health conditions or uh, inflammation. And I think, I don't know, you know, I don't know about you, but um, at my age, there's all kinds of things that that um, are a little slower, <laughs> you know, heal a little slower. I'm lucky, blessed, blessed, knock on wood. I do try to take care of myself. I have been blessed with amazing health. Uh, considering, um, I can't remember if it was my story yesterday or the day before on how I grew up on such a um, horrible diet and how I actually managed to grow. And, um, whoops, I do believe that it's the... Um, it's been what I've been doing this past 25 years. 25 years we've been, uh, are, is when I started um, taking all the courses and classes on nutrition and herbs and, and natural health and all that. You know, so 25 years of trying to be good, you know, as best you can, because I don't believe in being perfect. Um, I mean, it's great if, it's great if you can do that, but I'm not one to even remotely attempt to be perfect or do perfect. However, I do know that um, the, the, the best that I can do is going to enhance my health. And so I do try to be um, as good as possible so that I can be bad when I can. <laughs> so the better I am at eating... Um, 80% of the time means that when I do go out and I do have something that I shouldn't eat, um, then, you know, then my body can afford to do that because it's in such a condition that it can withstand that, that bit of abuse or whatever, going out and getting one of the, one of Vancouver Island's most famous donuts, you know, they're, they are super, super fresh and we don't do it often, but, um, Oh, at one point in time, 25 years ago, I couldn't go out and, um, yeah, I couldn't go out and, and have a donut because I was, uh, my health was really not good and I was feeling crappy and, and then you would get an inflammation response and all that kind of thing. And so, um, so it's really important. Like I, I actually have a painting that shows uh, um, that a, a wonderful woman here in Port Alberni painted, and it shows the path to health. And so it's got the stairs going up through the woods. And so if you're at the bottom of that path to health, you have to. And we were very, very strict in our diet for the first three years. Actually, it took three years for both my husband and I to, because uh, we were having really bad health problems, and that's 25 years ago. And so. If you're at the bottom of the path to health and you've got to climb up those 12 or 15 steps, you've got, you, you can't um, do things, like you have to do whatever you can to make it up each step. And, and usually it's being pretty strict. And so we were really strict for like really strict the first six months and then almost as strict the next six months until we got up a few steps, up a few steps, up a few steps. And then when you get to the top of your particular body's optimum health, that you can be to where you feel balanced and you can function. Um, then you can go out and you can enjoy things that you shouldn't. And then it's just a couple steps down. You know, it might take you a couple steps down, but it's only two more steps back up rather than being right at the bottom, if you know what I mean. And so I called it the path to health. And I actually have a, um, a uh, it's kind of like an ebook um, thing, a journey to health. It's a journey to health. Uh, information booklet thing and um, <clears throat> so I'm working on like I, I have uh, I haven't gotten it into a Kindle book yet I do have several books available but um, that one's just kind of like a, a PDF it's more of a PDF anyway it's available and um, 
And so it talks about that journey to health and what you can do and all the different inflammatory foods and all the different, uh, the difference between the acid and alkaline diet and all that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, so hi, Barb, so happy to see you. Yeah, I, I was, I was funny yesterday because I was like, I was, um, I was on painkillers <laughs> yesterday. So, um, yeah, so it was, it was pretty funny, really. Um, and it's better. It's still swollen. I'm tripping over my tongue. But I was saying the silver is the key. The silver is, um, well, I mean, aside from being antiviral, um, antibacterial, it, it disinfects and it cleans. And so I've been doing the mouth rinsing and everything to keep it really good, also, as well as salt water, of course. Um, yeah, so... Uh, okay, back to the seasoning. Isn't that nice? Look at it. I didn't realize it was all going to turn so orange. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're making a lentil soup. So I'm going to, should I add, I'm going to add the lentils now. So I did pre-cook these um, because the green lentils take longer. So the um, I did put them in the, uh, um, if you soak them, then it doesn't take as long to cook. And um, I did put these in these instant pots, so they are green lentils. So the lentils have a lot of um, they have a lot of um, manganese in them, and and B, vitamin B nine. And the manganese, the um, you know I, I keep forgetting like it's not magnesium, it's manganese, and I always get. I don't really get them confused, but I always get a little mixed up. And so the manganese regulates your brain, um, your brain and nerve function. And I know for sure, for sure, for sure, what magnesium does is it relaxes the muscles, works with the heart. And, and I know that most of the population is deficient in magnesium. Most of the population, at least I know in the Pacific Northwest, to the point where they were giving uh, injections of magnesium at the hospital because there were so many people that were so deficient and and you need roughly four times more magnesium than you do calcium because you need the magnesium to um hey jane hi good morning so you need the magnesium to absorb the calcium okay so the calcium cannot be taken up into the bones without enough magnesium and because we're so deficient um it was a couple of years ago that I studied that, it, but it was basically at that time we need four times more magnesium than we do calcium to be able to absorb the magnesium. But anyways, so lentils have manganese, which is really important for the brain and nerve function, of course, of protein for sure, and then uh, copper and some B vitamins and stuff like that. So what we're going to add to this for seasoning is um, I always like to add cayenne because it's so... Um, so good for the circulation, opens up the blood vessels, um, you know, increases everything in your body to function better. It is anti-inflammatory as well. So I'm going to also add um, some coriander and um, I'm going to, I don't think I'm doing anything else on this board, so I'm going to do it here because I don't want to get steam in my, in my jar. I'll hold it onto the edge. No, I'm really making a mess. Okay, so we're gonna add, we're gonna add the whole thing, and then I can clean out the bottle. There we go. Coriander, and coriander is really, really um, is related to the. It's related to the cilantro plant. It is the powdered cilantro, uh, coriander, and so cilantro itself is really, really good for you, especially in a tea. I'm gonna add a little bit of cumin too, um, not too much, because some people around here don't like too much cumin. I love it. But anyway, so the coriander and the cilantro, the cilantro is, um, it pulls heavy metals from the body and um, toxins. And so if you've been exposed to any kind of, um, oh God, you know what? My internet, Jane just made a comment on the internet. Our internet was down yesterday after, after dinner. And um, yeah, I don't know why, but it was like, six or no it was right at six because we were going to watch the news because the, watching the news is ever so entertaining these days you just can't wait to see what's going to happen next oh my god so anyway um yeah so for whatever reason we were meant to take a nap instead of watch the news because it wouldn't come on um so you you have to think about what the universe is telling me we didn't need to watch the news at six o'clock last night okay so so yeah so 
Anyway, cilantro is really good for removing toxins and heavy metals from the body, like if you're exposed to any chemicals, like anything from, um, you know, paints or um, hair dye even, <laughs> which I need to do again or something like that. Anything like that. I'm still a little scattered. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of molasses too. Just like a tablespoon of molasses. We'll try and set that there and do a little contortion movement. And um, yeah, so, so, la 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 la. Okay, how about some uh, Celtic sea salt? Not much because I just remembered what we're putting in here for flavoring. We are going to put the, um, we're, I'm going to use some of this chickpea miso, but I'll wait for it to cool down a bit first. But what I do have, just to get the flavors happening here, is um, from Healthy Habits, it's the um, organic bouillon cubes that are, that they have a miso flavor. So um, often I get the vegetable flavor, but they have a miso flavor. Um, and so just going to crush that up, put that in too. And then, uh, put the other spoon. Yeah, so miso is really good for you. It's a fermented um, kind of soybean, and the fermentation process makes it really helpful and uh, healthy for your colon and your uh, intestinal bacteria. Mm -hmm. And um, so important, your intestinal bacteria, and that's what I was saying to you guys, because right now, because of my... <laughs> My, my phone just changed into completely something else. I can still see your comments though. Um, because of the, of the stitches and everything in my mouth, um, I am on antibiotics. And I was saying yesterday that there's a time for herbs and there's a time for antibiotics. And even though I'm a herbalist and we do have herbal antibiotics and that is, um, you know, thank goodness for that. Uh, but sometimes, um, the herbs tend to work a little bit slower so it all depends on what you're working with and so um so we need you know we need conventional medicine as well as alternative medicine and so they can work together so and then with the of course with the antibiotics i'm totally upping my uh, my fermented um the sauerkraut and um and the i was taking the the gut shots and the <laughs> i know that sounds funny gut shots it's the probiotic um liquid from the raw sauerkraut or the kimchi and you can buy that at the health food store and you just take a little shot glass of that or kombucha or anything that's fermented that's i went all the way around um the miso thing Ugh, tripped on my tongue again uh, the miso thing for the fermented foods and how important they are and so this is another product that we uh, monique monique and i spoke about this last week and it's the tempe and or tempeh however you pronounce that and i'm not a fan at all i don't like the texture i don't like the taste uh, i'm not much of a soy person actually at all i don't like tofu either i don't i've used it a few times i just can't there's a couple tofu recipes that i don't mind uh, but i usually don't buy it so um i'm not a fan but this says smoky maple veggie bacon on the uh, on the tempe and it's fermented so it's good for you so I need that probiotic bacteria so I'm gonna add this for flavor right now I'm actually gonna shut this off because I've been talking too much and I've already cooked those vegetables way too much um, and so um, that's the other thing that in case you're new on here uh, I often start my soups with just a little bit of water and then I usually just saute the vegetables until they're like barely cooked tender crisp and um, and then don't add my water till the end to cool things off so that usually the vegetables are are still quite raw but I've been yapping away way too much on this one and the other thing is I, I can't chew a carrot anyways um, I have to have soft food right now and so we did the juicing yesterday um, I did a um, I did an avocado uh, I did an avocado mango smoothie yesterday. Oh my god, that was so good! And so yeah, so that's why we're cooking this to mush today. Um, and we're, so we're gonna add this because I'm gonna just turn it down, add a little bit of water, and um, and then uh, 
and then we'll talk about something else. But anyway, I did try a little bit, and it, it's not bad. Like, they take this stuff, and they make it like a little sort of a um, bacon slice-ish. And um, so, and I did wash my hands, of course, before I start cooking anything. But I'm just going to, I'm going to chop this into little bits and use it as a flavoring. And then I'll let you guys know how it is. <laughs> My knife is too long. Um, so uh, anyway, that'll add a little smoky maple flavor to the lentil soup. I'm going to add one more. Anyways, uh, I do and have, because we've been, um, you know, we've been plant-based for 25 years, really. Um, I've tried a lot of the, of the meat substitute products. And so I can pretty much uh, tell you what, anything tastes like like anything that's on the market i pretty much tried them all and um you know i don't use the the uh, processed ones as much as i used to you know because i'm i'm a little better at at working with um more natural ingredients you know with just the pure foods and um but i do like that once in a while right i like that tr the the treat of that and that one of the things um like i say the the soy and the tempeh and stuff is not my favorite but there is a soy, um, or I mean a tofu, a soft tofu, and I've made it where you, you scramble it up and you add turmeric and it kind of turns into scrambled eggs-ish. And, uh, and it was, it's pretty good. That was pretty good. And the other thing, the other product that I like, you know, um, is the Guardian, G-A-R-D-E-I-N. And they make the most amazing, it's like a, it, they call it turkey cutlets, and it's like a little cutlet plant-based completely and they have it like it's like a rosemary gravy dressing or rosemary gravy rosemary gravy <laughs> on it and I know oh my god those are like to die for so you know I kind of keep the process buying something processed like that as a treat once in a while but just so you know those guardian products are really quite amazing most of them um, and of course beyond beef goes beyond beef goes without saying it's just taken over the world and um really good products and um speaking of which um you know there's there was so much controversy it makes me laugh so much controversy about the beyond beef burgers and and you know how they're you know they're not as good as as they say and and it, and it's not a very good health supplement well it's not meant to be a health supplement it's meant to <laughs> it's not it's also supposed to be a treat it's not meant to um to be a health food so to speak it's just a better choice for those that don't want to eat meat or that um, you know care too much about animals to be eating beef it's a better choice uh, ethically but it was never meant to be a replacement like for your <laughs> for your fruits and vegetables um, anyway I won't go into that too too much but I've, I have um, shared my opinion on that a couple times okay so we're gonna do something else here we're gonna look at these guys and these are thimble berries and so i don't know you guys i really really want you to get out there and start getting some of this fantastic free food so this is a thimble berry leaf and it's very soft very very soft they call it nature's toilet paper and it's growing everywhere around here and the berries are kind of funny though they're they're a little funky because um they're really uh, quite you can see that they're um, very, very fragile. Like when you pull them off, they, they fall apart. Like it's really hard. When you pull them off, you nearly always drop them on the ground because they just kind of, you know, they just, they just kind of um, are very soft and fragile and they just kind of fall off. And they've got little tiny, 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 uh, you know, little bumps which is why they're called a thimble berry because they've got the little tiny dents like a um, sewing thimble. Anyways, um, they are quite tasty. They're a little, they are a little tricky to pick. I'm just going to show you the thing here. And, um, and so uh, they're, it's a medicinal plant. You can use, of course, you can use the berries. They've got vitamin C and stuff like that. But they have used the, um, they're, they're a little, they're, I don't have very many because I have, they're a little tricky to pick, but they do taste good. But the leaves are very, um, 
are very good in a tea. So they're good for, for stomach aches. They're good for um, uh, just helping to balance your stomach. They've used, um, oh gosh, they've used them intestinally for uh, helping with the mucous membranes of the esophagus. And um, it just kind of really works with the uh, balancing. So that if you had a little bit of diarrhea or you had a little bit of um, anything that was irritated or sore or inflamed in the intestine or the membranes, and it's helpful for that. It's just a really, really nice tea. Um, they used to use the roots for this for skin issues, you know, like acne and that kind of thing. And um, there's a little there's a little guy crawling on my hand. I'm just gonna push him right into the bowl. There. Sorry, I'll take you back outside after. Okay. So anyway, thimbleberry. So um, pick the berries. What I'm gonna do is I'm because they are so picky to pick. I'm only going to get a few for, um, I'm going to put them in the jar with the uh, apple cider vinegar and the honey to make a, um, <laughs> I just squished it, um, a little salad dressing with just adding berries. And you can do that with anything. You can do it with plums. You can do it with strawberries. You can do it with anything. Um, okay, so Monique's written something about the eggs. If you put black salt on the scramble, it makes it even taste like eggs. And the turmeric does make them turn yellow. Yes. Um, yeah, so that's thimbleberry. So I encourage you to start using some of these things for a tea. And so a little bit of this, and you can add it, you know, if you have any upset stomach or, you know, just feeling off or something, it's very soothing. The other thing I wanted to show you guys um, was the strawberry leaves. So, you know, I, I don't know, but I think everybody is growing strawberries. And so um, the, I mean, free tea, right? So why wouldn't you take the strawberry um, leaves and make them into tea? And you can do this, of course, with blueberry leaf tea and uh, raspberry tea and all that kind of stuff. Um, raspberry is known for helping with women's, um, which reminds me, I didn't finish telling you about the tomatoes, but anyway, you'll hear it again, I'm sure, <laughs> for women's issues. Um, but the strawberries, um, strawberries have manganese uh, also. So the lentils have the manganese and the, um, and the strawberries have manganese. And so it's really good for your brain and nerve function. So um, yeah, so the strawberries are really good for that. They've also got potassium in it too. And so, you know, I encourage you to, to find sources. Um, you know, I have to say, I'm a little concerned about uh, what's going to happen with the, um, you know, the grocery industry around here, because in the winter, I don't know, but I'd say probably like up to 70%, maybe more comes from California. And I don't know, you know, I just don't know what's going on. Like who knows what's going on. So, um, oh, there's another bug. I thought I washed these really good. So wash them really good. Make sure you get all the bugs off before you dehydrate them. <laughs> I'm going to have to go through there again. I don't know where he went. And um, I did wash them, but I, I'm going to have to really, well, I'll be laying them out on the dehydrator anyways. So I'll see if there's anything. And, uh, and so anyway, back to the, back to the um, grocery issue, possibly. Um, you know, why buy tea when you can make your own? So, and how easy is it to just, you know, grab a, a handful of, of strawberry leaves and, you know, cut them off with the scissors, give them a swish or two, <laughs> look for the bugs, and then, um, you know, just dry them and crumble them and make them in for tea. So, so we can have all these berry teas and the berry teas are so good for you because, um, well, nearly all of them have vitamin C, which is what we're going to need in the winter. Nearly all the berry, well, nearly all the berries and also nearly all the berry leaves, the edible berry leaves. Of course, you're only going to use edible berry leaves. Don't touch anything. If you don't know what it is, for sure, for sure, for sure, don't be eating it or ingesting it or even touching it sometimes. Um, but if it's an edible berry, like a thimbleberry, um, a salmon berry, uh, raspberry, blueberry, any of those leaves, um, that's what the teas are that, you know, if you look in the, 
blueberry tea. It comes from the leaves, not the blueberries. Well, sometimes from the blueberries, but usually from the leaves. So yeah, so I encourage you to do that. And the other thing I, I did put a post on, and I wanted to bring this up again. We did uh, we did talk about this a few weeks back, and um, but there it's getting to be uh, to where they're withdrawing back into the ground. And this is the lemon balm. And I did put a post on my Facebook uh, on how important this is. So I wanted to remind everyone, if you have lemon balm growing, you, it's time to start really gathering it. I mean, it, for the last few weeks it's been, but it's starting to kind of, the energy's going, going down in for the, um, I'm not even gonna say the word, <laughs> autumn or close to it, I'm not even gonna say it. But anyway, the energy's kind of going down because we're getting too hot this summer. I don't know why the energy is going down. It's going down. So um, so pick these because these are very antiviral. These, uh, lemon balm, super antiviral. I put this in my um, cold and flu uh, tea that I make, and I sell a lot of my cold and flu tea. Um, it's, it works like Buckley's, only it tastes way better. Like my cold and flu tea, I have hundreds of testimonials on how well it works. And... Um, uh, the lemon balm is not why it works. <laughs> it has other ingredients, which is why it works so effectively. But I do add in lemon balm, and, and the reason I do is because this is antiviral. So this is like a protective antiviral. Uh, tends to keep the viruses away. It increases and enhances your immune system to fight off viruses. It's been used extensively for things like herpes, um, cold sores, that kind of thing and um and it's it's got so many healing properties check out my my facebook post because it'll tell you all the different things that this lemon balm can do for you it's like super super awesome and um so if you have it now is the time to start gathering it before it starts backing into the ground um and with the same too right i mean the thimbleberries are just coming out now but the strawberries are kind of on the tail end too so so ideally when you're using a leaf you want it at it at its um you know gathers all the energy from the earth and it brings it up hi heather good morning and um so as it gathers up all the energy from the earth and then it and then it's in its fullest uh um most full of nutrition and and nutrients and medicine and everything if you're going for the leaves and that's when it's at its best uh, optimal that's the word I'm looking for and then later on you know then it does its thing with its flowers and its berries or whatever it is does while it's growing and then it starts reseeding back into the ground so now's the time to grab those guys and make your free tea um, and we can do it with so many different things but I just thought I'd point out some of the obvious things like strawberry leaves so have uh, I'm gonna have a cup of strawberry leaf tea and oh the other thing I will just mention I know I've mentioned it before, but um, where, if you are using a leaf for medicine, medicinal purposes, and you want it to have its optimum strength, um, it is much stronger if it's dried. So if I take this and I pour, pour hot water over it and I make a tea, um, it'll be great and it'll be healthy and it'll be beneficial, but it'll be nowhere near as powerful once it, as it would be once it's dried. So what the drying does is it actually breaks down the cellular structure. So the cells are holding onto the medicine and, and um, protecting it. Basically, the cells are encasing all the medicinal uh, constituents in it. And so when you dry it, you break down those cells, you break open those cells. So for, for the most part, for I'd say 90% of all herbs are way more effective um, when dried for, for the medicinal purposes. And I was going to just show you, I've got my, my little um, herbal thing here. And I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen these bottles that you can just put the herbs in, pour the hot water in, and it's got a little screen on the top for um, straining. Makes it easy when you're out on a walk and you find something that you know for sure, for sure, for sure what it is. And you pick it and you put it in your, in your thermos and then you can just drink it with the little screen on top. So anyways, okay, so... Um, I guess we're out of time and we will see you guys tomorrow and thank you for coming and hanging out it was really fun um, let me know if you have any questions or, or comments or whatever in the, in the questions or comments 
and uh, check out my YouTube and I'm getting better at Instagram too. So <laughs> anyway, see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out. Have a great day.